Today we're going to look at a problem on the 1986 Putnam exam and it's number A1, the first problem on the exam. And the problem asks to maximize x cubed minus 3x if you're given the constraint that x to the fourth plus 3x is less than or equal to 13x squared. Now I actually really like this problem and the reason I like it a lot is because it's a problem where you, if you're faced with this inequality that seems sort of intractable to deal with, but it's actually reasonable. If you rearrange this and put the 13x squared on the left hand side, you'll actually get an inequality in x as quartic, but that is manageable. And a hint I'll give you if you want to try this problem is to solve that quartic inequality by factoring. And you'll get a range of values for which x has to be. And then you can use standard calculus tools to maximize the function x cubed minus 3x in those intervals that you end up with that satisfy that inequality that's quartic right over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually do this. So rearranging, we get x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36 is less than or equal to zero. Okay, if we think about this as a quadratic in x squared itself, this factors 36 is a product of nine and four, so we get that x squared minus nine times the quantity x squared minus four is less than or equal to zero. And then we can factor each of these, because they're a difference of squares, into x plus three times x minus three and x plus two times x minus two. Okay, so this is actually a nice reasonable inequality to um, manage to try to handle. What we'll do is we'll draw a number line and analyze what happens for various values of x as things change in the different factors. So the factors are zero at the values negative three, negative two, two, and three. Now, all of them are negative below three, so the product is gonna be positive in that region. Then it switches to negative because one of the factors becomes negative, then two of them are, becomes positive, and then two of them become positive, so that the product is positive between negative two and two, then negative, then positive. So the values where this inequality holds are where the function is negative or zero, which happens in these two highlighted intervals right over here. So we can replace this complicated fourth degree inequality with saying that we're maximizing x cubed minus three x in the union of two intervals, when x is between negative three and negative two, and when x is between two and three. Okay, so this is great because now we've reduced this to a problem that is standard calculus. Um, so let's actually go ahead and complete it. We'll let f of x be the function that we're actually maximizing. Uh, so let's look at the derivative to be able to figure out where maxima might occur. So if we differentiate, we get 3x squared minus 3, which factors into 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, so... If we look at the, that should be plus one. So if we look at the interval negative three to negative two, both the quantities x minus one and x plus one are negative on that interval. So in that interval, f prime is actually positive, which means that the function f itself is increasing. Okay. So that gives us some information about where a potential maximum is in the union of those two intervals. We'll have to check the largest value of x in the interval and what the value of f of x is at that point. Now in our other interval from two to three, we have that f prime of x is positive as well because both x minus one and x plus one are positive in that interval. So f is also increasing there. Okay, so the maximum then is gonna be whatever is largest between f of negative two and f of three. We can check each of those. Uh, I think f of negative two is gonna work out to uh, negative eight plus six, um, and f of three is quite larger, it's 27 minus nine, which is 18. So the maximum of this thing is 18. So I think a big rule here, or a th big lesson that we take is even though the constraint we have looks like a complicated constraint, once we rearrange the inequality and factor, we're able to reinterpret it as actually being the union of two intervals.